Hey guys, so today we're going to talk about something that's crucial to all of us content creators these days. But first I'm going to start the video off with a little bit of a scenario. Imagine you spent hours working on a video, you've done edits, transitions, you've done sound design, you've done color grading, you export it, it looks perfect on your monitor and you're super happy. You send it up to the customer and the customer gets back to you and wondering like, what the heck did you do with the colors? What is this? It's all warm, it's all cold, it's green, it's magenta. It's, it's really shifted from what you're seeing on your display. And well, there is a few different issues here. One issue that we always struggle with as creators today is the shift we have from watching on an iPhone, an iPad, a Mac, PC, Android phone. Colors are perceived different on pretty much all devices. But how can we be sure that what we send out is actually the right thing? Like, how can we trust our colors? Well, there are a few things. Of course, the most important one is to have a perfectly calibrated monitor that you can trust, that you can rely on, a reference monitor. And in order to have a true reference monitor, you usually need to work with an I.O. box, like a Ultra Studio Mini 4K or a Decklink from Blackmagic that kind of bypasses the color management of your system and shows you a clean feed to your reference monitor. So. Those two things are crucial for us today, just to be able to deliver a project that looks great on all devices. So how do we achieve this? How do we get a perfectly calibrated monitor? Well, there's a few different solutions. One, of course, is that monitors come pre-calibrated. Flanders Scientific, for example, they do reference monitors and they send them pre-calibrated. Some monitors have a calibration tool built in, and some people use free software or they buy a um, pro with included software. And there's a bunch of different solutions. So the software I decided to work with is uh, Kalman from Portrait Displays because I started with Kalman Home for my LG. I've got an LG C3 OLED monitor. And then I actually upgraded to the Kalman Studio because they had a great deal on the Studio Bundle, which was the Studio software, heavily discounted. The C6 Probe, which looks like this and their G1 pattern generator. Uh, of course, in the LG, you have an internal pattern generator, but it's a bit laggy sometimes. And here I get something that Kalman, uh, that Portrait Displays actually developed just for this probe and for this workflow. So using this, I'm gonna show you now in the video. It's super easy. I get a pre-calibration and a post-calibration. So I get a report so I can see the differences. Now, my monitor, I have to say, it's actually calibrated just a while back, but in my office, the temperature fluctuates a bit. So let's see if I need to do a proper recalibration of it. So let's go and jump into the software. Okay, so now that we are in Kalman, we're going to start a new workflow, and then we're going to go with Open Workflow Template. We're going to go with a spe display specific, and in this case, we're going to go with AutoCal LG because it's going to help you. So now it's loading up the workflow for LG AutoCal. So now we're in AutoCal for LG with Kalman. And I'm going to go for an SDR calibration today. And here you see Hardware Connect. Now everything is already connected. On the screen now, you can see how it looked before the G1 pattern generator was connected because you just connected via the IP number. But everything is now connected as it should. We have the uh, Portrait Display C6 HDR5000. We have the G1 and we have the TV and it's in color space 709 because we're not doing HDR today. Then we go with next. And here we're gonna go with a wide point of D65, Rex 709 sRGB, but I do not wanna go to this. I'm gonna choose to go to power and then gamma 2.4. So we have a true Rex 709 gamma 2.4. Then we go next. I'm not changing anything here. It's good as it is. And then I go next. So here I have a pre-calibration. So then I will just push read series and then it's going to start reading the luminance and the color values. And here I'm going to skip by because it might take a little while. Okay, so now that we're finished, we can clearly see that the uh, values here is insanely bad, but I actually did a reset of the monitor before we began. So we have an average of 11.1 and a max of 15.9. And on color, we have an average deviance of seven and a max of 15.9. So 
this is not in any way good or acceptable. This would make me grade like, uh, I don't know what. Okay, so then we're gonna go here and now we're gonna go first, we need to reset. So we do a reset. So all the settings we have in the um, monitor will disappear. And as you can see up here, as long as this one is flashing, it's doing its reset thing. So we need to wait a little bit. Cool. And I'm gonna do my calibration in SDR Cinema. You can see here the different modes that we have if we would go to HDR, for example. But now we're going here. You see, enable calibration. It's perfect. That should be there now for the calibration. Then we push next. And here, luminance. Here we will push read continuous because we want to be about 15% brighter than our target brightness and my target brightness in this case will be about 100 102 nits so then we just take this display control slider since we're connected to the tv we can do all of our settings here and then let's get down to 32 now we're still a bit bright 20 now we're on 100, so that's just a little bit too... Okay, so luminance of 114.6. This is great because when we correct the colors and everything, it's gonna get a bit darker. So this is great for me, let's stay. And then we go next. And here we're gonna have a grayscale autocal. So this is where it's gonna calibrate the grays. And then we go with this little button here that says autocal. Then we're going to let it do its thing. So, and now this pops up and here we can have a bunch of different values, but let's go with LG 26 points because that was what was in there and a Delta E target of 0 0.5. I'm not changing that. Then we push okay and it's going to continue to do work. And as you can see now, it's reading a bunch of the targets on the screen. Okay, perfect. So now we can see here that we have finished our reads and it took 20 minutes for a full grayscale calibration completed. Perfect. Then we're going to push next. And we'll be prompted to come to the next part of our... And here we're going to calibrate the color so that they will fall into the right area. Push AutoCal here as well. And then we're going to be prompted to set what we want here. And here we get different ways of doing the calibration. We can do a lightning LUT. We can have matrix, fixed grid, fixed grid. And all of these will give you, of course, fixed grid 21 point. That's going to be a lot of read, read points. And that's going to take a lot of time. But let's go with the lightning LUT because I've noticed that it's actually perfect. And uh, same here. Not making any changes. I'm super happy with this. And then I'm gonna go, okay. And now it's gonna start creating a LUT and then store the LUT in the TV. And this is gonna do 101 reads. So it's gonna take a while and I'm gonna skip for it to be done. And now we're see now it's computing the correction LUT for the TV. So let's just finish that one up. Okay, so there we go. Now it has been Aurora color engine calibration completed successfully. It took about 10 minutes with 101 reads on the lightning setting. Then okay. And then we're gonna push next. So here we can now verify the luminance. As you know from the beginning, we put it about 15% higher than we we're supposed to so let's see we will put read continuous to see if we need to make any changes and now the value is actually 100.8 so i'd say that this is a perfect luminance value for my tv at the moment then we're gonna go next and here now we're done with the calibration we're just gonna do a post calibration verification so then we're gonna uncheck this box and we're gonna wait yeah now and then we're gonna go to next and now here we're gonna have a post calibration look to see how our calibration did 
and then we're gonna have read series and then we're gonna go through it again and hopefully we'll get a lot better result this time than what we did before so a moment of truth and as we can see here now when it's into the colors on the luminance it was a max of 0 0.7 and an average of 0 0.4 which is amazing and on the color at the moment we have a max of 1.7 which is on the red that drifts a little bit but on an average we have 0 0.7 which is also an amazing result so all in all if we go next to see comparison that we're going to be able to get out there we go save and report so now we're going to get a, a report that actually gives us before and after okay so here we have the pre-calibration uh, we, we can see it's quite a um, sad reading we have a grayscale average of delta 11.1 and color of seven on average and now afterwards we have a calibration of 0 0.4 and 0.7 on the color which i am super happy with so yeah that's how you calibrate a screen and now let's just go to kind of conclude what we want to have said with this video okay so now we finished the calibration workflow with lg rcal within the camera studio and as you can see it's super easy you have guides on how to set everything up before and you can watch this video if you want to walk through it you know to not miss any steps but it is super simple and it gave me a really accurate result. The only drift I had was a little bit on the red, but it can be due to the ambient lighting in here right now since I had everything kind of dimmed down so I could feel myself while doing it. But I'm happy with the result and a drift of an average under 0.7. That's really, really good. And as I said, I was using the, I was using the uh, C6 from uh, Kalman or from Portrait Displays. And Looking at their website now, you can grab the Calen Studio bundled with the C6 and the Pattern Generator G1. That means you can pretty much do all of the monitors you will ever need. You have the AutoCal, you have the regular calibration, and it now goes for 1700 US dollars. So it's a bit, I think it's about the same in euros. But I could definitely recommend you to check this out because you only need to buy one calibration solution and it's going to last you pretty much forever so have a look at portrait.com uh, or google portrait displays calman and you will find it and definitely check this out because it will make your work so much easier well once again thanks for watching don't forget to like and subscribe and i'll see you the next time ciao boom